Hi guys, this is Victoria Bowers, New York City based makeup artist and welcome to my home. To be specific, this is actually my studio. This is where I merge my two loves. I'm a painter and I'm a makeup artist. So this is where the magic happens and this is where I find my inner peace. So welcome. Before I begin, I wanted to say that I hope you're staying safe and that uh, you and your family are healthy. And um, I also wanted to thank our professionals in the health industry, doctors and nurses and technicians and everybody that has been on the forefront of the fight that we are experiencing today. Being cooped up at home as a makeup artist, you know, the first thing that will come to your mind is, oh, I'm gonna do a smoky eye tutorial. And um, there are plenty of those out there and they are beautiful and there's so much to learn about. A couple of my colleagues are doing it and they're doing a fantastic job. So um, why add another tutorial? We, we can talk about something uh, that is important um, to us as a professionals and even if you're just a makeup enthusiast these are the kind of things that you can uh, modify uh, to use at home uh, to keep yourself safe from infection or disease and uh, what i want to talk about today is uh, something that is near and dear to me uh, something that i take a lot of pride in and that is a sanitation the thing is as a makeup artist we are the first thing that a client is going to see, being a model or a celebrity or a, if you're preparing a bride, our energy and our touch prepares a person for a day ahead and, and, and sets the mood for the rest of the day. And besides having a good vibe and a good energy and understanding that there is a human being in front of you, I think adding a clean, safe, sanitized environment while you're applying and doing your craft is very important and very reassuring. I've always taken pride in being clean and hygienic. And um, this pandemic is shining a light in a very dark and dirty corners of our industry. I personally have witnessed a lots of unhygienic uh, practices by uh, my fellow makeup artists, especially during the fashion week. Um, Makeup is a breeding ground for bacteria and using the same brush on the on the model, especially a lip brush, you are uh, uh, spreading germs from one person to another and that should not be happening. Even I remember when I was in a crazy midst of you know, fashion week, I carried alcohol wipes with me and I would wipe down my brushes in between the models to make sure and to ensure that they have received a clean and precise application of color, no matter how crazy it is. And when we're on set, the things are a little bit more calm and we have plenty of time to clean up our sets, to clean up our brushes or to separate our brushes so they're not used on the same face. And this is something that I've heard from models themselves, you know. I, I hear of gratitude a lot when models are working with me of the fact that I, uh, you know, have their sponges marked with their name or that um, uh, their brushes are separated separately. And this is something that I'm going to talk about. Um, those are the little things that you can do as a professional. It's your duty as a professional to create a safe and hygienic environment for your clients. So what I want to show you today and what I want to talk about today is, is how I organize my kit um, to implement these things and how I go about them. And uh, one of my favorite things to do as a makeup artist is take a peek into other makeup artist kits and how they condense and how they organize. So, um, you know, welcome to the way I do and it might not work for you, but I would love to hear how you do things and, and um, open up the conversation of what we can do as makeup artists um, to better and uh, strengthen our um, practices. There are some things that I did as a, you know, before the pandemic. Uh, for example, I use a lot uh, a metal palette. But sometimes when I'm in the um, rush or in the middle of the set, um, I would use 
the back of my hand. I would sanitize the back of my hand and maybe sample lipstick and stuff. But this situation and, and this pandemic is making me question that now. And it is probably something that I will make a conscious effort not to do anymore and completely just go back to using a palette. Thankfully, there's a lots of tools and little gadgets in the industry. For example, mm -hmm. the little palettes for your finger or even like this little wrist um, palette that you can uh, have on set with you for touch-ups. And um, so, you know, my favorite back of the hand might be retired because, you know, things are getting serious out there, people. So we need to um, think about you know, some things that might seem natural and normal and a couple of months ago was completely acceptable, but um, it is being questioned now. Uh, so we're all going through this together. We're evolving. We're thinking about the ways that we can better our industry and survive this uh, change. So the first thing I want to show you, this is my little box that I carry everywhere with me. And this box is a lifesaver because uh, most of my disposables and uh, tools of the trade are hidden in this box. And I do not leave the house without this. So let me show you what we have inside here. So this is the box that I take everywhere with me. And um, this is where a lot of the, the things that I use constantly are placed for example alcohol very important uh, for example here's my um, heated uh, curler um, in order to apply this you have to apply it over mascara and um, as you can see it kind of color embeds in the mascara you know in, into the plastic of the heated curler but I will guarantee you that this is as clean as it can be because after every application, I make sure I sanitize it. And I sanitize it a lot with this alcohol. I wipe it down, I clean it. I take one of my disposable um, uh, Q-tips and I go in between the grooves and make sure that I remove um, as much as the color as possible. Of course, some is going to stay, but it has been sanitized by alcohol. And this is where I store all of my disposable. This is my favorite uh, mascara wand. It goes into, uh, you know, the smallest corner of the eye and really applies the mascara beautifully. Speaking of mascara, that is a one thing that um, you should never do is never use the original wand of the mascara to apply it directly on the eye. Uh, mascara and the lip gloss is probably one of the biggest uh, culprits of um, cross-contamination and a, a possible um, infection. And um, the way you remedy that is by using these wonderful nifty um, disposables. So you use it once and once you applied it on the um, eye, you throw it away and use the other one. You never, absolutely never double dip. The way I ensure that pencils are nicely sanitized is by spraying the sharpener with alcohol and then sharpening every pencil new and, and fresh for uh, application of color. In my little toolbox, another thing that I have are tweezers, I have um, individual flosses for a client, and um, I have little razors for um, brows or, or, you know, facial hair that is, again, sprayed with alcohol and sanitized in between each use. Um, the same is with scissors as well. And, um, you know, we have flosses. If somebody has a headache, you know, I have a little bit of Tylenol for them. Uh, yeah, I even have a little pack of, um, uh, what is this, the uh, Neosporin, just for cuts and stuff. I also have um, the whole pack of um, the Band-Aids. So all of these things are here with me uh, you know, whenever I need them and, um, you know, I go through alcohol, um, 
a lot. And even when I run out of um, uh, hand sanitizer, you know, I just spray my hands. Um, uh, but also, uh, whenever I can, and if I have an opportunity, I love going to the bathroom and just washing my hands frequently. That's why I'm always um, looking and searching for a fabulous, uh, potent uh, hand sanitizer because, you know, I go through it a lot. Another thing that I wanted to discuss is a brush cleansers. Uh, that is something that is a must, especially if you're working on multiple models. Um, there's a plenty of wonderful brush cleansers out there that uh, do a wonderful job in um, sanitizing and making your brushes smell yummy. So, um, you know, it's your own preference of what you like. Um, I find even when I use uh, uh, the brush, uh, the brush cleansers, I wash my brushes after every job at night. So if I'm on a job uh, in the same uh, location for multiple days, um, me or my assistant will wash the brushes at the end of the day and lay them out on the clean uh, piece of uh, a napkin or um, a paper towel to dry out overnight. But if I am there just for um, a day, I usually gather my brushes in the like a, a Ziploc bag that is uh, assigned for dirty brushes. And then I come home and then I uh, shampoo them, I moisturize them, I lay them out and they are ready and nice for a uh, next job. Um, if I have multiple models, what I do is I take the brushes and um, I take the cups from uh, coffee cups uh, from the craft table, from the uh, catering table and label the uh, uh, cups with their names and then the essential brushes like a lip brush or a powder brush they are separated in a, a, each model has their own cup and they really appreciate that and this is something that I've been doing for years and it's really helpful so that way you know that you are using their own tools for the rest of the day. Um, there are certain things that um, I uh, love uh, using for skin prep and I'm, I'm a huge uh, skincare um, lover. I think that's the most important thing for me. So I would do like these cute little gadgets uh, to massage, you know, a person's face and um, I use jade rollers, I use uh, gua sha and all of these tools are being applied on a person and sometimes you have multiple models. So what I make sure that I do is uh, clean them thoroughly with alcohol after I am done with the person. So nothing is ever used twice in a row on the different people. It's always clean, it's always ready for them. And um, you know, I even go as far as a monthly even if I have time, you know, like uh, every two weeks, take all of my stuff out of the kit and uh, clean it with alcohol and sanitize everything and wash what needs to be washed because um, you, besides having a really clean um, tools and practices on set, the appearance of your kit is very important. It, it is your image, it is who you are, it is extension of you as a professional. So if you have a very dusty, broken down um, uh, kit and tools, um, it just reflects the image that is not very acceptable and it can hurt you in the long run, especially now in today's age where everybody is much more conscious about the way we practice our hygiene and our safety. So another thing that I wanted to talk about is um, something that is probably the grossest thing I have seen done and I will show you the way I uh, counter that practice uh, is applying a lip gloss straight out of the wand into the tube with this wand on multiple people. It makes me shudder and cringe. That is an absolute no. Uh, liquid emollient things are potential breeding ground for bacteria. So you applying 
the same lip gloss with the same wand over and over and over on different people. I mean, you get the picture. There are very simple ways of doing this and that's where your uh, metal palette and your spatula comes in play. This little palette is a very useful and essential tool um, that I use all the time. Um, I know that makeup can be a germ factory if you do not implement practices uh, to prevent germs from spreading. For example, double dipping. It's a no-no. I have palettes, I have uh, wands, I have things that um, will help me not to double dip. Um, my, for example, emollient products or liquid products are especially prone to um, contamination and uh, this is where the palette comes in handy. I uh, just scrape a little bit of lipstick or uh, cream blush in a spatula and uh, spread it beautifully on my um, palette and uh, then I use it from there. And when I'm done, I use alcohol to um, sanitize it and um, start over. Um, I touched on uh, my dislike and horror of um, using a wand directly on the lips. And the way I sample uh, lip gloss is by pumping a couple of times, squeezing, applying plenty of product to be able to be picked up with the lip brush. So there is really no need for you to be using that wand directly on the face. Same goes with the lipstick. You take your spatula, you shave off a little bit of color, and you apply it directly onto the metal palette. And again, use a brush to apply it on the lips. Another great use for a palette is that you can use it as a mixing station to create a perfect uh, foundation color um, for the application. Uh, so I would use it to apply different colors of foundation to create my custom color. Oops. The metal palette is a wonderful tool for you to sample your foundations on it and you know even create and mix colors and make your own custom foundation. Um, and then you just wipe it off, clean it with alcohol and you're done. And that is absolutely most important and holds true when it comes to cream foundations or concealers. Um, you don't ever want to apply this directly on the face. You can also sample it on your palette by just using a little bit on the palette. And there you go. There's never need for you to double dip any of your products. So there it is, um, just a little glimpse in um, the way I have been doing my sanitizing and uh, my hygienic practices as a makeup artist, something I've been always proud of. And um, I'm glad to share it with you. And I know lots of you uh, do these things as well. I have not invented the wheel here, but I'm just um, bringing it to a forefront um, to start a conversation that is very important, uh, you know, due to the climate that we're in. And um, it opens up a lot of avenues of discussion and how we can better ourselves. How do we make our job as important, as essential as, as it was to us before all of this? And um, if you have any ideas or um, you want to share the way you do things, um, please do comment below and um, Let's open up the conversation and um, I'm sending you a lot of love. Please still stay safe, um, take care of yourself and, and your family and uh, try not to lose your mind. If you're homeschooling kids, please help, send help. <laughs> and um, hopefully all of this is over soon and we can go back to creating art and, and doing what we love doing. I really miss touching faces. I really miss 
that warmth and, and, and camaraderie and um, sense of community we had um, before all of this started. And I'm looking forward to that continuing. So mwah, 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 mwah. kisses and hugs and talk soon. I have a lot more to say.